Hey everybody, Mo here. Today we're talking about a couple of industry conferences that you may find of interest, a recent New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission meeting, another acquisition in Pennsylvania by Cresco Labs, an under-the-radar SEC filing from TrueLeaf, and a few other things as well. Welcome to the Saturday, October 16th edition of Mary Jane Markets. This is a show covering the developing news of the North American cannabis sector, as well as analyzing a few of its operators, Cresco Labs, CureLeaf, Green Thumb Industries, and TrueLeaf. The goal here is to do all of the due diligence I normally do as an investor in these companies, and then provide that to you in a concise episode so you can stay updated, and hopefully you find that valuable. As usual, let's take a quick look at the market before diving into the news, and as you can see, the sector is continuing to slip downward. I don't much read into or care about day-to-day -day price movements. We all know by now that this sector isn't a stranger to volatility, and I invite everyone once more to take a long-term perspective investing in this sector, and remember that your thesis this the reason you're invested in these companies doesn't change because of a few red days or short-term volatility. Anyway, moving on to some actual industry news, the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference took place over the last two days, October 14th and 15th. This is something I had mentioned a few episodes ago, but in case you missed it, you can find some of these sessions on their YouTube page. These are seven and eight hour streams, so I do recommend that you check out the website, see which sessions you're interested in, and then find those speakers in the videos. I'm Another interesting forum which took place over the week was a talk at Salt New York titled Investing in Cannabis, Analyzing the Industry's Future. I think this one was overshadowed by the Benzinga conference, but I did find it interesting even though it was just a general discussion and I think if you've been following the space for long enough, you've sort of heard all of these points before. If you're new to the space though, I do encourage you to watch and listen to as many different sources as you can. And I think this forum of higher level managers and partners is interesting. All right, moving on to government policy updates. I only have one piece of news for you, and that comes out of New Jersey's Cannabis Regulatory Commission, which met on Friday. And as you can see from this headline, after a very long delay of these licenses being held up in court, the commission has finally issued these 14 new medical marijuana licenses. This NJ.com article summarizes those winners here, and this list doesn't include the four MSOs we follow on this show. Though these licenses were partially cultivation licenses, partially vertically integrated licenses, totaling 200. 35,000 new square feet of cultivation space. These are still just for the medicinal market in the state. New Jersey's adult use program has been moving very slowly. Stuff like this really goes to show you that the U.S. is not just one market, but 50 different markets. And this one could end up being the eighth largest market in the nation, potentially a four and a half billion dollar market. But the last few years in New Jersey have seen very little progress. The hope is now that the commission moves on to launching the adult use market, but a date for that has still yet to be set. All right, next up is another acquisition by Cresco Labs in the state of Pennsylvania. This time they have acquired a company called Laurel Harvest Labs, aka Laurel Harvest, for $80 million. That transaction is expected to close this year in the fourth quarter. We saw in the recent newsletter from CEO Charlie Bachtel that Pennsylvania was one of his main focuses. Obviously, this is for good reasons, as we've talked about. Pennsylvania could be the sixth largest market in the nation. Its medicinal program has been a huge success both last year and this year. As usual, they give some broad highlights here of the transaction. They're acquiring approximately 52,000 square feet of indoor grow and processing space with the option to build out an additional 52,000 square feet of cultivation space, one dispensary that's operational in Montgomeryville, another that's under construction in Scranton, and licenses to open up four more throughout the state. It looks like Laurel Harvest has a cool clinical partnership as well with a local medical school. They're a little bit sparse with the exact transaction details, but the highlight is that the purchase price is $80 million, and then they include some language in here that's indicative of them keeping current management in place. So exact word here is plus earn out amounts payable upon achievement of certain post closing milestones. So they're lining up incentives and targets for presumably current management to hit after the deal closes. The transaction will be completed on a cash free, debt free basis with a mutually agreed upon normalized target level of working capital. The purchase price would be payable upon closing of the transaction, subject to the adjustments and lockup agreements contained in the definitive agreements and will be comprised of a mix of cash and stock. So all language we've seen and analyzed before, that would be indicative of Cresco wanting to keep current management in place. And they don't state specifically what proportion this 80 million is going to be in cash and stock, which really grinds my gears. So hopefully they have a SEC or SADAR filing soon that discloses that. Speaking of SEC filings, this one was made by TrueLeave on Wednesday and is a bit 
mysterious. This is a Form D, Notice of Exempt Offering of Securities. So they've issued some type of new security and they are now informing the SEC about that. I know for new investors, these filings are sort of hard to read. So I'm going to try and simplify and just hit the highlights here. The issuer's identity, who's doing the issuing of these securities is Trulieve. They give some basic information that's required by the form. Under type of filing, this is a new notice to the SEC that's dated September 30th, 2021. And then here's where it gets interesting. Under section eight, duration of offering, the question is, does the issuer intend this offering to last more than one year? And they've marked no. Under section nine, type of security offered. They've marked debt. And under section 10, is this offering being made in connection with a business combination transaction such as a merger, acquisition, or exchange offer? They've marked no. So we all know that the Harvest Health acquisition took place on October 1st, and this is unrelated to that. Another key section here is section 12, which I think is often confused. So this is a sales compensation section where the recipient is listed as can accord genuity. So this isn't the recipient of the securities. This is just the broker or dealer. That's the go-between. If I skip ahead a little bit to section 15, the sales commissions or finder fees is what that's referring to. The actual offering is in sections 13 and 14 here, where as you can see, the offering amount was for $66 million and 14, the investors section says to enter the total number of investors who already have invested in this offering, of which they list 14. So to summarize, this is a $66 million note from Trulieve to 14 individual investors made on September 30th and it's not connected to the Harvest Health acquisition and it's for a term of less than one year. So what is this for? I have no idea. We know that with the Harvest Health acquisition, they currently made a $380 million raise. So this is a bit of a mystery to me, unless I'm missing or misreading something, which I don't think I am. So I think at this point, I'm going to reach out to IR about this. I haven't seen a press release about this from Trulieve, so that's about all I can do. And when I hear back from them, I'll let you guys know. If you guys see anything about this, please share it out, either in the comments section or on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at MJ Markets. All right, those are the main pieces of news I have for you. So we'll shift over to my things happened segment where I quickly go through some things that I want to bring to your attention, but don't want to go into in depth. So along with the other three companies, Trulieve has now announced that they'll hold their third quarter earnings call on November 15th before market open. So we'll add that to our calendar. Another quick thing is that Trulieve is continuing to rebrand their Harvest Health stores over to Trulieve, and this is going to occur throughout the month of October. And it looks like they'll be making some events around Around these reopenings. So that should be fun and expect to see a couple more pieces of news around this throughout the month. Also wanted to touch upon some new products from Cureleaf, one of those coming from their select brand called Snooze Bites. This is an edible obviously intended for getting a good night of rest and is a combination of fast acting THC and long lasting CBN, they're saying in a one to one ratio. Also through their select brand, Cureleaf has introduced a THC infused beverage enhancer kit. So this is called Squeeze. So this basically mixes in THC and flavoring with a beverage of your choice probably water. Since these are some pretty strong flavors here, watermelon, strawberry lemonade, hint of sweet, and lemon lime. And it looks like they're just doing a soft launch as of now in the New York market. All right, another cool thing which I found over the week was this three-year-old Growers Network video where they tour Los Suenos Farms in Colorado. So this is a pretty cool half-hour video where they talk to employees there. And of course, the reason I bring it up is that Cure Leaf bought this farm, which is the largest producer in the state of Colorado. So kind of an older video, but still pretty cool to see what Cureleaf is buying. Lastly, I just want to say thank you as I've reached 100 subscribers on YouTube. This is really encouraging as I feel like this project is still in its infancy. And I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for the validation that this type of content is actually useful. So thank you so, so much. Thanks so much for listening. Please like, subscribe, turn on notifications. If you'd like to follow the North American cannabis sector and analyze a few of its operators with me, please share this out to any investors or forums that you think may find it interesting or beneficial. Word of mouth is really the only way I have of growing the channel. If you'd like to contact me, my Twitter is at MJ Markets. If you'd like to, if you'd like to support the channel, I have a Patreon page set up at patreon.com slash Mary Jane Markets. And I hope to talk to you again soon on the next episode of Mary Jane Markets. Thank you.